right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick, Travel Far E Local, and I am currently in Vientiane, capital city of Laos. Right now, I am on my way to get some lunch. The place that I'm going right now specializes in lap or lab. And if you're familiar with the food of Isan, you will probably ask yourself, wait a second, that sounds like Isan food or Thai food from the Isan region of Thailand. And you'd be right, it is exactly like that. Lao and Isan were at one time the same country until the French came in in the 19th century and arbitrarily decided to make the Mekong River a dividing point between French Indochina and the rest of mainland Southeast Asia. And so the cuisine of Lao shares many, many similarities with that of Isan. Here in Lao, you will find sticky rice, you will find papaya salad, you will find a spicy dipping sauce known as jaw or jaw, which is very similar to Nam Preek. You will find lab or minced meat salads that are just as varied as they are in Isan. I'm a bit rushing right now because it's 1.35 in the afternoon. I got quite a late start to the day. And this lab restaurant I'm going to closes at two o'clock. So hopefully I can get there in time to try some. We shall see. In Laos, there's a heavy, heavy emphasis on using every part of the animal. And so you frequently see offal, blood, blood cakes um, in Laotian cuisine. Last night I had a amazing dish of lab which, cont which contained uh, pork, pork liver, and ant eggs actually, which was super interesting and super good. Okay, I found it, but I am on the wrong side of the street. So I'm gonna do something that's probably very illegal and cross this median right here. Hello. Ah. Hello. Sabai di. Uh, lap? Lap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I sit outside over there? Yeah. Thank you. Wow, it's dark in here. I'm gonna go over here. Lap? Huh? Same, Hello. same? Same. Ah, okay, okay. Only one, yeah. Oh, it's super dark in here. It's nice though to be out of the sun. Up chai. Uh, lab? Yeah. Pork lab? Um, spicy. Spicy. Spicy, okay. Sticky rice. Sticky rice, yes. And, um, uh, beer lao. Beer lao. <laughs> yeah. One. One. Do you have a small beer lao? No. Or just big? Just big one. Hmm. What do you have small? Can. Can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can is okay. One. Small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one thirty in the afternoon. Beer lao. Beer lao. <laughs> beer lao is okay. So I'm not really sure what type of lob this is. I literally just said lob, so I have no idea what I'm getting. My guess is it's going to involve organ of some kind. And other good stuff, I don't know. The best part of drinking beer in this country is how cold it is. They keep the beer lao like just above freezing. It's really, really nice.
All right, so she just brought out some stuff and you'll probably notice a lot of similarities, like I was saying, between here and Isan. We have sticky rice served in a very similar type of like bamboo container, a plate of greens, which are essentially for the lob. You can eat them, uh, you can put the lob in them and kind of eat it with like cucumber, um, eggplant, I don't know what these are, these red greens, these like reddish green greens here. These are something new, I've never seen these before. Mmm. That tastes like, um, very dry, very tannic, very bitter. With a very like, almost a cross between like mint and lemongrass. And then a dipping sauce, which is loaded with chili pepper seeds. Very, very similar to an Isan table. Like, very, very similar. Here's the lob. A lot of chilies on the side. And I'm gonna go with, uh, we'll start with this. Let's start with just like a little uh, handful here of the sticky rice. And then in the dip, give this a shot. That dip is so fragrant. Ooh, -hoo. man, that's spicy. Cilantro, chili peppers, fish sauce. Wow, a lot going on there. This is gonna be good. This is gonna be really good. So let's get some sticky rice. A little lob. Look at all that mint. Wow. And a chili. Get a nice healthy dose of sticky rice. Little dunk in the spicy fish sauce mix here. Get your lob on top, and then you are on your way. Mm, wow, spicy, minty, cilantro in here too. Let's get some of these herbs on here. Let's try it with that. Man, the sticky rice just goes with this so perfectly. Lob is quite possibly my favorite food of Isan and it's slowly becoming my favorite Laotian food as well. It's also just one of my favorite foods in the world. Mm. That herb has a nice bitterness and crunch to it. Because those leaves are very firm. Nice like tannic undertone. Mix those chilies in there. Look at all the colors. Red, yellow, green, brown, white. Get that dipping sauce on there. Nice cooling effect because that dipping sauce and the lob itself is super spicy, but the sticky rice cuts through that really nicely. Really helps with the spice level. love all the greens. Between that, the dipping sauce, you really have the ability, and this is not just this place, but Southeast Asia in general, when it comes to the condiments and the herbs that they put on the table, really gives you the opportunity to create your own kind of dish, right? Like everyone can order this, everyone at the table can order this exact lob dish. But with all of these different condiments and variations, you can make it your own. And two people could be eating the same dish that will taste completely different. Even each bite, bite to bite, is completely different depending on how you use these herbs, this dipping sauce, sticky rice or no sticky rice. Like, it changes the flavor completely. It's not just like the taste of the food, it's variability in every bite that you eat between person to person, even within yourself. Fantastic way to eat and it's a amazing part of eating in this part of the world particularly. This place is legit. This is the best lob I've ever had. I'm serious. All right, man, that was excellent. 
Um, check in the description below. I'll put the actual like address of that place if you want to try some like seriously good lob in Vientiane. Right now, I'm, I got to get a tuk-tuk though because uh, the next place I'm going is about 30 minutes away by foot. And uh, my heel <laughs> is still not like totally healed. My heel is not totally healed. Yeah, I don't know. But the sea urchin spines are still in there and uh, ow. Yeah, like if I step on the right part of it, it, it does still hurt a bit. So, tuk tuk it is. One hundred thousand keep. No, that's too much. Huh? It's not that far. How much? Uh, fifty thousand kip. Oh, it it teacher. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I would I would do fifty thousand. Okay. Fifty? Okay. Oh, seventy. Okay. Fifty or seventy? <laughs> Uh, chick, 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 no, chick, it's okay, it's okay. Chick. It's all right, that's okay. Yeah, I'll just go to the next one. Huh? 50? Tuk Tuk drivers, man. It's always a headache trying to get these people to get the right price. Oh, I think they're gonna try and share it, maybe. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> that was actually close. That person like literally just didn't stop. Huh? I'm not really sure what's happening. Where? Okay, okay. Where you go? Pa Tat Luang. Tat Luang. Yeah. Uh, Tuaba. Long, no, again. one one way. One way? Yeah. Come back? No. Oh. <laughs> How much? 50. 50? Yeah. 60? No, 50. 50 or no? Come back? No. <laughs> 50? Okay. Yes or no? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Oh, Here? This is why I avoid tuk tucks at, at, you know, I try to at least because it's just such a pain in the ass. Like, I think this car is blocking us, so he's got to try and get this thing out of the way. No. <laughs> what? How? It's like nothing but a headache. If I didn't have an injured foot, I'd be walking, trust me, because of this. You spend more time trying to just get the tuk-tuk than you do just getting to the place that you're going.
Tuxay Monument or Victory Monument or Victory Arch, basically Vientiane's uh, L'Arc de Triomphe. Built in the 1960s to commemorate uh, Lao soldiers that fallen Lao soldiers from the War for Independence. Actually donated, uh, built with cement donated from the United States. That we gave them apparently to build a, a railway station. Okay, so predictably, it doesn't really, the tuk tuk doesn't get you right up to it. The monument is right there. The shrine, not monument. The temple is right there. So you have to walk across this like abandoned parking lot with this like really heavy Soviet influenced building. Clearly, something important. Okay, so this is Pa Tat Luang, which is probably Vientiane's most famous and iconic temple. If you go on the Lao e-visa website, this is what's on the front page. So it is beautiful. It's this temple that is completely gold, painted in gold. And uh, it is gorgeous, wow. Let's see what the prices are to get in. 30,000 for a foreigner, 5,000 for Lao. I don't really want to go into the museum. I just want to walk around outside. I don't know if that's possible or not. So this area is apparently, I guess, multiple different temples. Like, this is an entire temple complex that's right next to uh, the Golden Temple. Let's see if we can go inside. Look at how beautiful the painting is. And the gold. Wow, this is uh, pretty amazing, actually. These are all, these are all hand painted on the roof. This is like stunningly beautiful. Oh, hello. Uh, I got a friend here. It's come to join me in the temple. Wow, I mean, just look at the ceiling. That is amazing. So fun fact, I have a Lonely Planet guide for Lao. I use Lonely Planet a lot when I travel. And uh, this right here, this scene, 
let me move over this scene right here that picture is the front cover of the book <laughs> it's hilarious but yeah this is a uh, this is amazing i actually don't know if this is i you know th this artwork to me looks like a hindu temple but uh, lao is primarily a buddhist country so i actually don't know if this is hindu or not or buddhist or not it's beautiful though either way little market area behind the temple Let's see what we got clothes sticky rice baskets oh, these are not sticky rice baskets these are uh, just baskets maybe they are for sticky rice some of them maybe clothes and then the temples right there sorry it's facing right into the Sun More stuff, more market. Yeah, cigarettes, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, see, these are actually sticky rice baskets right here. And this is actually used to cook the sticky rice. Okay, pretty awesome temple, but I don't want to go inside. It's 30,000 kip to go into the museum inside, which is, I'm not really, to be honest, I don't really know what's inside. I didn't think you could even go inside. I thought it was just like, you kind of walk around the outside, but in any event, I'm going to skip it and uh, get another tuk-tuk to the next location. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. <sighs> okay, I thought I was getting a tuk-tuk, but this man is taking me in his minivan. <laughs> Here, I do directions. I'll do directions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, near, near. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Vientiane? You from Vientiane? Yeah. Ah. So I'm going to a place called uh, Anna Grilled Duck Restaurant. It's a very interesting dish that's supposed to be really good that I really want to try, which I will tell you about in a minute. But it's quite far out of the city, and uh, hence the need for a taxi. Uh, right? And then that way. Alright, so I think we're just about there. It's just down the road. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right, so 150. So 100. 50. Hop chai. Hop chai. Okay. Yeah, See bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh. All right, so I'm not sure where I'm at, but man, this is a super nice neighborhood. Look at those apartments, they're gorgeous. Gated community. Nice greenery. This is definitely a rich part of Vientiane. It means my restaurant bill is going to be nice and fat. Anyway, I'm going to a place called Anna Duck Grill. There it is. Wow, look at this house. It's up there. It's all that area up there. I don't know how to get there. Whoa. Hi, uh, Anna Grilled Duck. <laughs> Here? Yeah, here it is. I 
It's a weird thing to see out front of a restaurant. But I think this is, I think this is it. Given all of the uh, Anna Duck Grill stickers they have on the door. Anyway, Pang Pet, that's what I'm here for, Pang Pet. Not a lot happening in Anna Duck Grill, huh? Oh man, I hope they're open. Uh, just one. Oh yeah, this is perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see right here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, sticky rice? Ah, uh, yeah, pictures are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there is no English. Here, and the menu is all in Laotian. Those are good things. Those are, those are very good things. Okay, uh, why am I here? It's an annoying sound my tripod made. Um, Pang Pet, Pang Pet, which is probably not how you say it, is a dish uh, essentially of coagulated duck blood, raw duck blood, that is topped with lots of herbs like mint and cilantro. Chai. And um, I believe the way they make this is they take the fresh raw duck blood and they mix a little water into it to speed the coagulation process and it gives it like a gelatinous consistency, almost like you're eating um, gelatin um, or something like that. Like, yeah, like basically like a gel like gelatin. I have a visitor. Hi. Chai. We got key limes, we got long beans. I'm sure this is probably great with a lot of lime. I think it's cold. It is, yeah, it's cold. Oh man, it's a huge portion too. See, it has this like gelatinous consistency. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like kind of jiggly. All right, a little sticky rice. Pop it on our spoon. Get a little bite of the gelatinous goodness. So I think it also has, I'm not sure what's on the bottom. I think there's also raw meat in this, like raw buffalo maybe. All right, let's give it a shot. This doesn't taste anything like blood. It tastes like mint. It tastes like cilantro. It tastes like peanuts that are in it. It takes a lot of talent to make something like this taste the way it does and not like blood. No, no like coppery taste that you might expect with blood. There's also like um, fried garlic or fried shallots on top. I think it's fried garlic. This is pure Lao, man. This is about as Laotian as it gets. Pang Pep. Classic example too of a dish born out of poverty. Very poor people who had to figure out a way to make blood and organ taste good many, many eons ago. This one's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> you might want to work your way up to the Pang Pet if you're not much of an adventurous eater. Start with blood sausage or something. Work your way up to Pang Pet. That's gonna do it for this one. I'm gonna say goodbye from Vientiane. I'm gonna finish my Pang Pet. I'm gonna play with this cat. And 
walk a certain distance that way to try and get a tuk-tuk back into town. All right, guys, till the next one. See you from VMTM. Bye.